Marie Stewart A. Swerdlow. And Jana Diamore A. Swerdlow. Say what you say your name now. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. For Expansions.com. And can you believe it's the third week in July, no. 2014? Incredible. I can't believe uh, the summer that wasn't is going by yeah. quickly. We only have, what, about three weeks till our seminar? Is that right? Uh, August, yeah, 8, 9, 10, right. I think. And another month till school starts. No, less than that for less us. Less than that. Our boys yeah. go start the middle of school yeah. of August. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, I just, it was so cold at night recently that I noticed some trees across the street that tops turn in color. Really? Right. Yeah. Maybe they're just frightened or something. I don't know. They should be. They should be. But uh, at least the weather's been calmer, even though it's been mm -hmm. cold. Anyway. Of course, the, the big story of this week, uh, always uh, surprise stories every week. You never know. Is, of course, the uh, downing of uh, Malaysian Airlines Flight 17. Now, the, the news constantly refers to it as a crash. It was not a crash. It didn't crash. It was blown up. So why do they keep calling it a crash? I don't know. I mean, it crashed to the ground, but it didn't, it didn't crash. It blew up in the sky. And, of course, I'm going to get to all the conspiracy information about that in a moment. But my opinion is, and I would refer you both, all of you, to my two articles uh, this past week on the Malaysian Airlines flight and my uh, information about it, my opinions about it. And I had stated in one of my articles, I that's think on I our did, site. that's on our site, Expel, they're watching this, they know expansions.com if they're watching this. And um, uh, I referred to the fact that uh, the Ukrainian military really doesn't have the capacity to shoot down a plane like that, nor would they have the motive to do that. Uh, the Russian uh, drunken, smoking, uh, uh, ragtag army that's in, the, in eastern Ukraine, I mean, I don't know if they can tie their own shoelaces, let alone uh, shoot down a plane at 33,000 feet or 10,000 meters in the sky. I said that this was done by professionals who knew what they were doing, targeted on purpose. I mentioned in my article that there were a lot of uh, delegates going to an AIDS conference in uh, Melbourne, Australia. You can read about all of that on, on our website. Um, now, what I did mention is that the synchronicity of information is overwhelming to the fact that there were AIDS delegates on that plane. You will recall that exactly 18 years before, 1996, TWA Flight 800 was on its way from JFK to Paris when it was also shot down by a missile, even though they said it was a fuel tank explosion, it was not. It was a missile. And on board were uh, French and Israeli agents who had uh, AIDS virus vials. And I don't know if you remember, we were living on Long Island at the time, and we were told, do not pick up any vials on the beach because they could contain the AIDS virus that was being carried in that plane. They said it. Mm -hmm. uh, then you also recall 1999, the Swiss Air flight that was uh, downed off the coast of Nova Scotia. Uh, on board were delegates to, guess what? An AIDS conference in Geneva. So one thing after another. But it is a very memorable week because during that same week, uh, we had uh, JFK Jr.'s plane disappear on July 16th of 99, I think it was. Uh, it, uh, uh, July 20th is the anniversary of the moon landing in 1969, if that really happened. So there's a lot of historical uh, events that occurred during this week in July over the years. And I want to also remind you that uh, we reported on Christine Lagarde, who is the head right. of the IMF, the International Monetary right. Fund, right. and her rant about numerology and, and the magic number seven. So right. if you did not see the podcast last mm -hmm. week, please go back, refer to that, or look that up online. There's a podcast about that. So all of that continues to tie in to what mm. this information yeah, is. Yeah, and I was also told, someone sent me that that video went viral on her, that she, the things that she said. So uh, there's a reason for all of that. But uh, the main uh, protagonist in Ukraine, this uh, pro-Russian separatist, uh, who, um, whose name is Igor Gurkin, that's one of the names, he's also known as Igor Strelkov. Um, he is a retired military officer, of Russian, uh, who is suspected of actually pressing the button uh, that shot down the plane. Um, he has been called, and I quote, one of the most powerful separatist figures in eastern Ukraine, but he's a Russian citizen from Moscow. So what's he doing there? 
Uh, he has declared himself the Minister of Defense of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, according to Radio for Europe. I think I might declare a free republic here in Southwest Michigan, okay. the Swerdlow Empire or something like that, that and then I can good. proclaim myself, mm -hmm. myself emperor. You've always wanted that title. Yeah. And many people are referring to me now as emperor. I hear that. Yeah. Uh, according to the Ukrainian government, this Strelkov is a covert agent of the Russian military intelligence, GRQ, and they said he's a veteran of both the Soviet and Russian armies. Is there a difference? Um, they also call him, uh, Reuters calls him a top Russian operative in the separatist East. He drives around in a black Mercedes, uh, hides behind tinted windows, and his aim is to destroy Ukrainian forces that venture onto this new republic's uh, territory. Uh, he is um, taking orders from Moscow, according to this information. And here's the interesting thing about him. Now you see people, the same person in the same, different places and things happen that with the same person around. Uh, he was supposedly was in Crimea during the annexation of that territory to Russia. And then he moved to Ukraine. And he was also involved in the conflicts in Yugoslavia and Chechnya. He's a busy boy, that does uh, so. He's just bopping around there, you know. Um, he also posted uh, on a social network at the time the Malaysian Airlines plane went down uh, that he, he took responsibility claiming that it was a Ukrainian aircraft. And then it was removed, uh, that posting was removed shortly afterwards. Uh, but as I mentioned, no, this was done on purpose. It was not done by these separatists. Uh, they don't have the capacity to, to do that kind of uh, professional same, military operation. It's the same thing that when everything happened with 9-11, those people didn't have the capacity to do what we were told that they did. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to address uh, some of the conspiracy uh, theories that have been going around the Internet. And people, please stop sending them to me. I've seen them. I know what they are. Um, now, one of the commanders in Ukraine, the Russian commander, said that the victims looked like they had been dead a long time and uh, that there was a significant number of the bodies weren't fresh and were drained of blood and reeked of decomposition. Well, hello, they just got blown up out of the sky. Uh, their bodies were turned, they said, into the organs were like blown out of the bodies. And I don't know if you remember back when, uh, again, TWA 800 was, shot, was blown up in the sky over, over near Long Island, the bodies that they found, they said the blood in those bodies were almost like jellied, they, they were like solid, uh, because of the uh, type of chemicals and, and uh, force that were used in the missile explosion. He also stated that there was a large amount of blood serum and medications found in the wreckage. Well, if there were AIDS delegates going on a conference, I would imagine they would have things like that with them. And since I would imagine that uh, many of them have HIV or AIDS, um, one of the theories said that this was actually the bodies were from, uh, uh, and the whole plane was the uh, Malaysian 370 and that they had to get rid of the plane. People, the governments, the Illuminati don't have to do that. They can destroy the plane and the bodies secretly and no one has to know anything. Um, living people were seen checking in and boarding the plane. It is not an Israeli operation, as one uh, ranting conspiratorial person said on the, uh, on the um, internet, and, and actually said and took a, showed a photograph of a Malaysian Airlines jet in Tel Aviv airport and said, see, the, the Israelis did it. First of all, that's not true. Israel and Malaysia do not have diplomatic relations. You will not find the plane of either country on the territories of the other nor would they have a plane out in the open to take a photograph of it for internet. So, I'm sorry, yes, the thing is a conspiracy, it was done on purpose, but it's not Flight 370. And as I mentioned, my opinion, my belief is 370 will appear during the staged alien invasion. And I want to remind people uh, to go back and review the opening scenes of uh, the movie V that came out, I think, in the 1980s, the, the reptilian invasion of the Earth. 
and uh, you will see that the opening scenes of a war and attacks and all of a sudden these vehicles appear in the sky and the war stops. Well, that's the whole plan for the staged alien invasion, to create these wars, to create these situations so when the world is completely in turmoil and the term World War III has been used to describe this particular incident, as they call it the new uh, Archduke Ferdinand assassination, you know, like this is the new version of it. Um, isn't it funny how all the world wars start in Eastern Europe? Interesting. Um, and so, uh, once the war gets underway and all this is going on, then the aliens come and we stop the wars and we all join together under one global government, and that was Hitler's plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to add one thing to that, which I thought was interesting, and I don't have a link for this, but this was on the home, AOL homepage. And a couple of things, first of all, it did start out saying it was 295 mm -hmm. okay, people, and then it went on to 298. Right. Now, the interesting thing, this is what it says. It says, the Boeing 77 carrying 295 souls yeah. appear to have broken up before impact. Why did they say souls? They did that with the first Malaysian. They called. They said two, 239 souls. They, okay. That was the first time I had seen that. Yeah, and it's not in the article, mm -hmm. but yet it was on the homepage description of the article. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, we want to follow this term as being used a bit more. For yeah. a specific reason. Yes, and, and, and I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the, the change in the uh, number of people from 295 to 298. Um, and then at first they said there were 23 Americans, now there's only one American, and he's really not an American, he's a dual citizen of Holland and U.S. Uh, here's the thing that you need to know. When the plane door closes at the gate, they know that second who's on the plane, how many people, what the nationalities are. It shouldn't take hours or days to release that information and come up with wrong figures in the beginning. That's right away something going on. They're trying to maybe change uh, uh, on identification. There, this, yes, all this kinds of thing. So, so right away you know that when they do that, something's up. Now, change venue. Let's go to Japan. Or maybe you don't want to after Sorry. this story. Because after 307 years, uh, Mount Fuji is about to erupt, according to Japanese scientists. Um, they said that that nine plus earthquake in 2011 caused a lot of pressure under volcanic areas of Japan, and that most of the earthquakes that are occurring now in Japan are centered near volcanic areas. And they said Mount Fuji, and I quote, is in a particularly precarious state, uh, and that it's crit and it's critical. So, um, they said there's a high concentration of magma underneath Mount Fuji. Uh, the eruption could be disastrous for the millions of people in Tokyo, as well as the surrounding area. Uh, residents of cities immediately around Mount Fuji would be in danger of lava flow, uh, while other communities would be in danger of ash. And when that happened, that question of if it is going to happen, it would most likely disrupt a uh, flights across the Pacific Ocean, and as we know, Tokyo is a major destination, and so that would be a big issue for travel. Wouldn't that also set off the other side on the Pacific Rim? Well, it's already twisting already and goes. turning, and you know, like I tell people in California, your days are numbered, I'm sorry. Uh, since we're in Japan, let's go to China, but it's not really China. It's China's president, Xi Jinping, who wants to build a railroad, guess where? In South America. Hmm. Um, he wants to include uh, Peru and Brazil uh, to form a railway link between Peru's Pacific coast to Brazil's Atlantic coast. Yeah, isn't this interesting? Because this is, follows right on the heels. Well, that's what I have here, because it also said they just signed uh, a memorandum with Honduras to build a railway between on that country, coast to coast. Uh, they are building a railroad or want to build a railroad in Colombia between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of that country. Um, and, of course, you mentioned about Nicaragua last mm -hmm. time, uh, the 275-kilometer-long uh, canal. That would be an alternative to the Panama Canal. Right, built by the Chinese. And apparently, China has a burgeoning trade with Central and South America, and China is already Brazil's largest trading partner. Wow. Not even the United States anymore. And the reason they said is because it will uh, reduce uh, the 
cost of shipping it from Atlantic to Pacific. Um, but as, a, as an aside, you might remember China and Russia are together building high-speed rail lines across the former Central Asian Soviet republics like mm -hmm. Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, Turkmenistan. They're, 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 those Chinese like to build railroads. Mm -hmm. They but built the railroads in North America too in the 1800s. Remember the Russians are providing the security for the canal that's being built in Nicaragua. Yeah, so it's a, it's a conspiracy. Well, they're coming from all directions, really surrounding the U.S., if you want to think about it that Well, way. they already have, haven't they? Yes. Yeah, and let's not even talk about Iceland yet. I'm going to do that when I'm in Iceland. Who likes McDonald's? I bet a lot of you out there like McDonald's, even though you're not supposed to be eating that. Well, I just uh, got some information about what's in those delicious uh, McDonald's french fries. Do you want to know what's in them? Do you? Okay. I'm sure I can guess. Sodium acid pyrophosphate, vegetable oil, that's canola, soybean, hydrogenated soybean, and even more types of vegetable oil with an additive called TBHQ. I'm not even going to try to pronounce what that stands for, but this TBHQ that's in McDonald's uh, food can cause side effects like stomach tumors. Isn't that lovely? And they keep them in big vats, which mean they can go rancid very quickly. And not only that, they add sugar and salt on top of all that, and they refry it again in more oil, so that you have what they call a hedonistic trifecta of fat, salt, and sugar. And that's just the French fries. Mmm, well, let's get some today and have that. Now, uh, my last story, because we we, we're in a rush today. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you're not going to go through all. I'm sorry. You're not going through all oh, this yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, no. Uh, TSA, the wonderful security people who take care of our airports here in the United States. I'm sorry, but I told you like, they're like 12 years old. Well, in Orlando International Airport, one of the TSA agents failed to recognize the nation's capital as part of the United States because a passenger from, who had a driver's license from the District of Columbia, which is what we call our capital, District of Columbia, he had a valid uh, form of a driver's license, uh, Gay presented it, and they said, that's not acceptable, we need a passport, because they thought he was a foreigner. Mm -hmm. Well, unbeknownst to the TSA, this passenger happened to be a Washington, D.C. reporter for the Orlando ABC affiliate WTSP, who did a story about uh, this incident and embarrassed the TSA. He asked the TSA agent, do you not know that the District of Col what the District of Columbia is? It's Washington, D.C. He said, and after a while, it became clear the agent didn't know that. So guess what the TSA is going to do? They're going to show all their officers at Orlando Airport what a driver's license looks like from Washington, D.C. I feel safe, do you? Well, I feel really safe now. What's interesting, now. though, is a lot of people don't understand here, even in the U.S., in these states, and I've reported on this before, that Washington, D.C. is not a state. Well, that's correct. It's a different uh, district. That's why it's called the District of Columbia, which, by the way, Columbia is from Columba, the Illuminati symbol of the dove and Samiramis and all that. You can read uh, about that on uh, in my books and David Icke's books. Um, Washington, D.C., by constitution, is only supposed to be an international agent for the independent states. And each state under the constitution is allowed to print their own money and have their own army. So why don't we? Well, and that's perhaps one of the reasons why they're bringing this out. So remember, they have to open up the frequency one way or the other. Yeah, but... And remember, I also told you that the District of Columbia is not subject to FDA rules and regulations. That's right. And many other things that the rest of us are subject to, it is not subject to that. It is like a foreign country. Well, it is. And it is. there are several, and I had a report on this at one time before, and I don't remember all of them, but I know there's one in London that's similar to this. The Vatican is one, and there's two or three others in the around the world who have the same status as Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. 
Yeah. But you can do your research on that, and there's a name for that. Well, Me Mexico also has the federal district for Mexico that, City. I believe. Distrito Federal. Yeah, I believe if you connect everything, it's like a big pentagram. I can't mm, remember. Yeah, yeah. But because well, it's been a while since Well, Washington, D.C. is designed as yes. a pentagram shape. Right, so there's so, a reason. So, yeah. like I always tell you, if they're bringing this to the forefront, there is a reason. Mm. You can go now. I'm, I can go now? Okay. I want, following on symbolism, there was a swastika advertisement. Now, I reported on this a couple of years ago. This was recently happened over Brighton Beach and Coney Island. Ah, my, where I used to go when I was a little boy. Yeah. Anyway, there's a plane that pulls a swastika across, and the... Our organization that does this is called Pro Swastika because supposedly it's trying to return the meaning of the swastika, right. swastika to its original right. meaning. It actually which, was a very uh, important holy symbol. Yes, and they say it means good luck and goodwill. Mm -hmm. And they say as long as it's questionable that they will continue to fly it. And they also say that the, post, uh, the, the group leader told the Huffington Post, that the swastika was given to humans by a group of extraterrestrial ah. scientists who created mankind. Ah. So I thought that was interesting. The only way to show these aliens that humans have evolved enough to accept them is to rehabilitate the symbol. I see. And this is actually the fifth year, five, that's a healing number, that the group has attempted to do this. And it says that they, their campaign will hit 50 cities all through, over the world and goes through July 12th. So it's mm -hmm. happened. But again, I thought that was interesting. This continues to be in the news, the swastika symbol. I think that's forthright uh, Program. programming and, and sabotage yes. of Illuminati. And that they're trying to activate within people. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing, um, Miss Idaho wears an insulin pump. I saw that. And that was flashed all over the internet. And now everybody with insulin pumps are flashing that all over the internet. You would think that Miss Idaho would wear potatoes. You would think so. But we don't know what Idaho. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe she has them somewhere else. Maybe. Well, anyway, this follows on another story, which I thought was interesting, about a model who wants to be, um, or a lady with a colostomy bag, who oh. wants to be a model. So they showed her in her bikini with a colostomy bag. And then they showed a lot of other people with the same issue with their colostomy bags. Now they're showing the people with their insulin pumps. So we can always extrapolate things. I believe this is kind of opening up again the acceptability that what you are is not necessarily all human flesh. Transhuman stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's on its way. So That makes sense. So anyway, keep your eye on that. Now here's another one for you. Now this, we've all heard of the West Nile virus and some of these. Which now doesn't we have, exist outside of the Nile area. We're now going. we have chikungunya virus. Hey, you watch your language, Missy. In the U.S. for the first time, loosely translated and from what language, I'm not sure, it means contorted with pain. Oh, that, uh, is, I know people like that. Yeah, it's called chikungunya virus. That's and, for eating chickens, huh? Well, I, why they call these things, I don't know. Apparently it's spread, spread through the bite of a mosquito, uh, cannot be transferred via human to human. So it doesn't bite you. It causes fever, severe joint pain, muscle pain, headache, nausea, rash, and more. With, uh, it said in 2004, that it has reached epidemic proportions, but in the article they don't tell us where. With uh, it's Africa and uh, I think uh, Central America. I don't know. And they say with considerable morbidity and suffering, there's no cure, they just treat the symptoms. But here in the U.S. they say not to worry because basically it doesn't kill you. However, the people, again, who have more concern are the very young, such as newborns, the elderly, over the 65. And you're looking at me, I'm not that old. Not yet, but you're on your way. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Again, they keep bringing up these new things that we've never heard of here in the U.S. and then talking to you would make you frightened. So they can make chicken gunya soup. Apparently. Can we lay some chicken gunya soup? Now, have you ever heard of Manhattan Hinge? Manhattan Hinge? Yes. I heard of Manhattan. Okay. I never heard of this either. Maybe some of you out there in New York, and you grew up in New York, so if anybody would have heard of it... I will deny it forever. You should have heard about it. But anyway, apparently... Twice a year, the setting sun perfectly aligns oh, yeah, I heard about that. with the east-west streets of Manhattan's main street. Grid. I never heard it when I lived there. Well, see, and this is why I'm saying these are it's like the Washington D.C. symbolism and the way it's set up. They don't tell you 
but now it's kind of coming out. Now this is coming out. The same thing of all these so-called sacred sites around the world, certain days of the year the sun appears between certain, you know, points. So now they're calling this Manhattan Hinge and they're saying, like usual, the New Yorker is lined up to photograph this phenomenon. I never heard of it, yeah. ever. Friday, July 11th and Saturday the 12th, when the sun was perfectly aligned. See, I know that there's sometimes of the year the sun is perfectly aligned underneath my mankini, and I take pictures of that. Okay. This is telling So anyway, whatever is going on, this is they're going to continue to promote this and make again it acceptable. This has to do with ritual. Now, you had reported about them unloading a plane for mysterious odor, I believe, last oh, week. Oh, yeah, that was a um, United was Airlines that? flight that stunk. Okay, and they like, don't how go could you tell us. the difference? But here it was a mysterious odor prompts evacuation of 100 homes in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, I heard about that too. Again, but there again, it's Pennsylvania. Of course it stinks. But the issue is, is nobody can identify the smell. It's the people in Pennsylvania. So this is the second time now that we've heard about noxious smells that cannot be identified that are causing them to evacuate people. So something's going on. This is the second time. Watch for at least the third. Keep your ears Boy, open. Boy, they better stay out of the boys' room. I'll be evacuating that pretty soon. Well, our boys' room have no problem. Now, here we have another one reference to the soul being gone, as I reported about just a few minutes ago about the airplane. Mm -hmm. This is a woman whose husband was in the VA hospital in Lexington, Kentucky was told that her husband, let me see, what, her husband was pronounced dead, so she wanted to go to the hospital room to, and ask if she could go back one more time to visit him. Mm -hmm. So when she went to see him, he had a heart rate and blood pressure. But, so she went in back to the, tell them, we have had this happen before in hospitals mm -hmm. where they're denying it. One person's saying that they're dead in the hospitals and the doctors are saying they're not. This happened with the baby not too long ago. Did they ask the patient, are you dead? No. Uh, I don't think so. Anyway, so when she went back to confront the hospital staff, they told her, and I'm quoting this, his soul was gone. How did they know they measured the soul? But this is another reference to soul, so we keep bringing this back. Now, I don't know about soul, North and South Korea soul. All I'm going to tell you is, if that ever happens to me, don't pull a plug yet. No, I'm not pulling any plugs, but keep this in mind. Why are they calling it souls? This, this again, is new verbiage. And whenever they introduce new verbiage, they just act like it's so uh, like oh, it's a, always been there. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, they said that there was one man the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs declared dead four times. Really? Yeah. And between 2007 and 2010, 30,000 Americans were wrongly declared dead by the Social Security Administration. Hmm. So, Is it, wasn't it also that they recently sent draft notices to? men who were born in the 1800s. Yes, that wasn't too long ago, yeah, too. So that a lot was brilliant. Of, but, but there are reasons behind this. It doesn't, it's, there, these are not accidents, and that's what I always want you to remember. Now, here's another one following along the line of things that I've been telling you about. There is a transgender activist who wants all children to be born genderless. How's okay? that? What this means is you tell, for example, we have seen, let's say in Sweden, where they had a, a child, but they did not disclose the sex. They sent the child to the school with a, with a name that could be either male or female to see what the child would do, and they didn't tell the teachers they wanted this child to be treated as just a child. And of course, we had gender roles, you know, women did this, women stayed home and raised the kids, men went to work, blah, blah. Now we move, we fast forward all this. And now we're telling that the boys can do anything they want, the girls can do anything they want. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying, this, this transgender activists are saying that uh, the world is full of possibilities, but we're still limiting them because when they're born, and we say you're a girl, a girl has certain expectations, or a boy has certain expectations. Mm -hmm. Now this specific person wants you to raise your child without a gender until the child comes to the parent. And the so, child, hey, I'm a boy or yes, a girl. until they make up their mind whether mm -hmm. they're a girl, a boy, or another. Or maybe they're not even human. Well, that's very possible as well. This supposedly will remove the expectations and stereotypes. And in addition, besides that, in my opinion, if you have a clone child, if we start when we start cloning people publicly, I mean, when, publicly, mm -hmm. then this will also lead for things. So again, these, this is all about a mix-up of gender confusion. It's a big soup, and you're not going to know what you are in that soup. It's a chicken soup is what I think. It could be. 
So keep that story in mind. Do now, I have the, to? Uh, yeah. kind of filled up right now. The other thing is that we don't want to pass this one over, speaking of gender issues, that the Church of England has now voted in favor of women bishops as of July 14th. I'm not amused. So that's going to be another change, which mm -hmm. to me might make a change in the Roman Catholic Church if the Church of England has done this. Mm -hmm. I just hope that they fix their teeth. Yeah, we'll find out. Now, monogamy, not your thing. Here's why you should consider an open relationship. Okay. This is why... Um, what I've been telling you that they just start talking about things again it's like everything is normal out there um, and open relationships are normal it's not just the weird person down the road it's the person next door it's your co-worker it's your colleague it's your school teacher you know everything is really about separating people out from being monogamous monogamous by helping you to know one person well and therefore getting to know yourself well they want you to spread yourself around, mm -hmm. and they're considered that. So really, people will not have attachments. Where they're really going is they want you attached to the government. They want your loyalties to the government, not to each other, not to children, not to families, You're not to your even your own species, because you won't know what your species even is. Well, you don't even know your own gender. That's right. So there are lots of ways that they're twisting and turning you. And the other thing that's going around, and you have, probably haven't been where I've been. What do you mean by that? But the other thing that's going around all over the place are, um, I, don't, I don't even know what they're called, I guess personal vibrators, either vaginal or anal. These are, you see them everywhere in cartoons. I don't see them everywhere. In cartoons. In um, cartoons? Yeah, the kids uh, got them plastered to their heads. and they're, yeah, And they're saying they're a dinosaur and the women are embarrassed. They're all over the place now. And so it's almost like, again, all these things are normal, natural. If you don't have one, there's something wrong with you. And the same with the anal stuff. That is also over there. It's all over. So how do you know which ones to use if you don't know your gender? I guess you just figure out which hole it goes in. Don't oh, plop it in. Janet, honestly. But it's, okay, cut. It's all over. All these things are now normal. Same with masturbation. They're telling you how to masturbate okay, all over the place. I knew you were going to go down these, these roads again. I always go down these roads because I want you to see. These are, used to be things that you'd find you know, in pornography magazines. This well, apparently is, you're finding them. This is tying people into the animal mind, and that's how they're controlling you. And that's how we're teaching people to understand what's out there, identify it, and don't participate in it. Now, the other thing they're doing, and now you've probably seen the post, and I've kind of ignored this aspect of it, but one of them, and if I don't, I don't share any of these if I can obviously help it, but they... Pornography, or that's the mm -hmm. same thing. Everybody's into porn now. They have the porn campuses on, or the queens on campus, you know, going to the college, and you know, they have articles about the porn kings, and it just it goes on and on. Now, this is again how they're changing the meaning. First of all, they had food porn, so that means something that's really beautiful and delicious because this is how they're changing mm -hmm. the like what is kind of hidden, secretive, behind the scenes things you're not supposed to let people know about. So they're now changing it, like they have food porn. So they have all these beautiful th dishes, and then they pass, you know, they label it food porn, food porn, food porn. Then they change that, they move that along to earth porn. So beautiful places on earth. Oh. Now they're passing it all over the internet as earth porn. I never now, saw that one. Now, the last one, this latest one, believe it or not, is called inspiration porn, where they take people with di disabilities. And because these people are inspirational, because they've overcome something, this is now inspiration porn. So they're taking all the sexual stuff that basically ties you into your animal mind, and they're making it acceptable. So they're going to turn. They're trying to take the human species. And you know, it's interesting. And I, I really hesitated about saying this, but I am going to say this. Uh oh. I was in Walmart. Believe it or you not. You went to Walmart. I went to so Walmart. embarrassed. I know. I've been to Walmart for a couple of years, where there was something Why did you go that there? one of my children wanted, and it was the only. We've been to like sixteen other stores. Oh, a virus. So we're gonna go look. And his comment was basically, "Oh my gosh, mom, I'm embarrassed." Yeah, and really. I'm saying, "Yes, I know. This is why we don't come here." Up, you wore a hood over your face. Point being is, point being is what are they beaming in that Walmart store? Because these people really are like animals. I'm sorry if you go there. Put up your protection and put up your violet. They really are. The stuff they call food there is not food. 
It's like they're experimenting with these no, people. No, there's no food and water. No, it's like they're experimenting with them mm -hmm. to find out how low can you go. They're pretty low. It's, it's really bad. And it's, so, they should call it butt mark. And it, you know, it reminds me, and I've told this story before, that my ex-father-in-law raised cattle, and there again, we're trying to figure out what the cattle would eat, and they fed them newspaper, shredded newspaper, coated in molasses, and straw. And which people is, ate that. No, the cow, cow. Yeah, but then the people ate whatever the cow did. Right. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, they fed straw. Well, straw is different than hay. Straw has no nutri nutritive value, and that was covered <clears> in molasses. So it's the same thing. What can the human part of the animal live on and, and still, you know, be viable? Well, even you go to any fast food, is crap anyway. Well, like what you reported on McDonald's. Yeah, that's just the fries. Yeah, so you've got to be careful what you put in your mind, what you put in your body. Watch my videos, which I've done for a while, but they're out there, and I'm working on some more new but ones I remember, coming I'll say it again. I, remember I reported that time, I think I did, that milk chocolate is 40% wax. Well, Hershey's milk chocolate. Yeah. But, but there is wax in chocolate. You have to be very mindful of what you eat and where it comes from. So... Alrighty, a couple more articles before I'm done. We have a long distance call from across the universe. Oh. This is from the Arecibo radio dish in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's said that they actually heard a burst of radio waves on November 2nd, 2012. You know how they always go you know, way back in the past and the future, blah, blah. Now the same signal, which had been heard a few times before, but only by the park's radio telescope in Australia. So mm -hmm. now, I said astronomers at that time questioned its origin, but since the Australia was the only one hearing it, they figured that it had to be something that was coming from our planet. Uh, Australia hears a lot of weird things, like the pings in the ocean from the plane that wasn't there. Yeah. Now, because the Arecibo radio dish in Puerto Rico has picked this up, mm -hmm. now apparently this is from Victoria Caspi, who's one of the lead investigators in the discovery, an astrophysicist at McGill University in Montreal oh, I went there. said, quote, It took a long time for me and my collaborators to really believe in its reality. We are inherently skeptical and needed to consider every alternative before actually believing its reality. So, since the Arecibo dish has picked up the mysterious burst, it confirms to Caspi and her international team that it is indeed cosmic origin. Hmm. Then the article goes on to say that weird signals have perplexed astronomers for decades, but none have panned out to be aliens making long-distance calls to us. Maybe they're just texting. However, because of that, she says, efforts will focus on listening to large swaths of the sky at once to try to hunt down more of these fast bursts. Mm. And she says, quote, this is super exciting and it's the sort of discovery we all hope to make. Mm -hmm. But the next challenge will be figuring out what they are, and that will be at least as fun as the original discovery. Unquote. You know, even by our own phone, sometimes we have a message, we don't know what the heck they said. That's right, we think it's aliens. Yeah, yeah could seriously. be. Seriously. We could probably help them if they would ask People, us. when you leave messages, why do you say your phone number so fast that no one could possibly understand what you're saying? I don't get that. How are we supposed to call you back? Well, who knows why they do what they do. I guess they've been eating food at Walmart. Yeah, really. Then the University of California scientists are now but saying... Crap, huh? Camouflage aliens live among us. See how I ignore him? This is what I live with. You ignore me my whole life. Camouflage aliens live among us. They are saying that, of course, we've talked about this for years, but now the scientists are saying that it's an unusual hypothesis suggesting that space aliens have long settled on Earth mm -hmm. and lived among us as observers. They must have read my book. There is no evidence of this, they're saying, but according to ancient sources, and they're including the Bible in this, oh, yeah. our planet has been visited by representatives of extraterrestrial civilizations since its inception. Of course. In 2000, scientists at the University of California, led by Professor Jonathan Malkinson, held a press conference during which this sensational news said that representatives of extraterrestrial civilizations have long been among humans and adopted human appearance and closely monitor our every move. They found out about us. I guess so. Now this story I saved till last because I think oh it's my the God. best. I can't one. imagine what that's going to be. No, you can't imagine this one uh, actually. People, you, turn turn it off. Turn it. This actually off. has to do with your specific work. What? This one again is very interesting to me because it's showing the trend and actually extrapolating on a trend that I've been telling you about for actually many years. Mm -hmm. This has to do with the middle initial of your name. Okay. See, I surprised you, didn't I? Not really. Yeah, Go you on. weren't expecting that. I could see, I can read your thoughts and see the pictures in your head. 
So, is the middle initial going extinct? Now here we go, and they said when we think of middle initials, this is how that article comes come starts. We think of celebrities. Well, I don't really, but this is what they say. Mary J. Blige, I guess, Michael J. Fox, Franklin D. Roosevelt, George W. Bush. Okay, they're saying that, now this is, a, this is a term, have you ever heard the term a millennial? Maybe. Okay, it says, quote, from the New York Times, the New York, or, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, most millennials in particular tend to want to be more egalitarian and the use of a middle initial would be perceived as class, classist. Maybe, does that mean people born after 2000? Well, it's said that baby boomer, boomers use middle names more often than millennials. But see, millennials not a term that we've used before. I've never really heard Not of like it. this. So the millennials wanted to be more egalitarian. So like the older people, like George W. Bush, Franklin D. Roosevelt, they put in the middle initial. Jesus H. Christ. There you go. So. Now, egalitarianism is the belief in human equality, and classicism is unfair treatment based on class. So this professor, who was quoted by the New York Times, suggests that millennials are starting to view the middle initial in a negative light. Now, what do you tell people about a middle name? It balances your frequency. That's right. And if you don't have one, then what do you tell them to Those do? It's too extreme that you to put, to put one in there. That's right. Whether it's an initial or name, or whether it's culturally appropriate. They're now telling people to take it out. Now, in Europe, a lot of people do not yeah. have middle names or Which sometimes... Which is why Europe is so screwed up. Sometimes we find Europeans more so than on, on this mm -hmm. part of the world with maybe three, four, five middle names and so forth, mm -hmm. which can also mess you up depending on how, what's going on with you and the, exactly the frequencies of those names. Now, it says, if we're making observations, we dare say the use of only a first name is on the rise. Ah. Now, of course, we all know about Cher. Then we move on to Rihanna, Shakira, and Zendaya, who's a lot of those I'm not exactly sure about, but these are people who are now only using the first name. So what happens if you only have a first name? You would only be available, you would only have interaction consciously, you would have no uh, non-physical uh, abilities. That's right. So that could possibly be where they're moving people. They've taken, the reason I'm bringing this up is they're taking out, remember what I told you about cursive writing. That's a disconnection from your superconscious mind. I've been telling you they're going to take out printing because they're going to tell you why you have the computer. Okay? So you'll be able to communicate with each other. Now they're working more on changing your names. And I've talked about names all along. Last week I reported on the pure names of, Iceland, of the Icelandic people. And in Germany, the same thing. We think Germany, Nazis, they're keeping those frequencies where they want them to be. But here in the U.S., most people can be things like flower or tree or... A uh, Yeah, they can be a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Things, okay? Things, what not you, people. What would you be if you had only one name? Fabulous. Mm. <laughs> now, you have to remember, they're turning you into things, into objects to be manipulated. I would just be emperor. That would make it impress fabulous. Maybe. So anyway, I would still have two names, and I had to put a middle name in there to balance that. Mm -hmm. Well, so they want people who like swastikas have no middle name, no gender, and eat uh, poisonous french fries. Yes. So follow these trends. I mean, this is where they're going with humanity. You don't have to participate in them. That's what we teach you here, is to understand what's going on, observe the trend, because it's so easy to be sucked in. You don't know what's going on until you're in the middle, then you have to get yourself out. So if you do your hyperspace and oversoul work, you don't have to be in the middle of it to start with. You can observe it and understand it, but not participate in it. And the seminar we're doing in August on communication is going to be absolutely fabulous. We're going to be teaching you about communicating in your world to make a difference and in your inner world so that you have better communication with your own soul personality. Because most of you do not even know who you are. You're too tied into that animal mind. It's our job to help get you out of there and back into being the magnificent soul personality that you are. Because we're aliens observing the human race here in disguise. There's a lot of things going on here which we're helping you unravel here at Expansions.com mm. that you will find absolutely nowhere else on this earth. In fact, our house is actually a, a spaceship. Yes. And when the time comes, it's just going to lift off. I like and that. And the real shape will appear. I like that. That call. works. Mm. It works for me. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if you'll be aboard, but I, I, I'll be a...
charge of it. I will never be bored. B O R E D. Okay. Okay. Back to me now. It's I'm always back to you. Yeah. So, um, anything about the future? Well, I mean, it's what you said, se August. September. And September is Iceland and Poland. Correct. And then we have October. October is a conference. Well, that's going where to be. Where I will tell you what the alien agenda is. Yes, and that's going to be fabulous. We've been doing some work on it already. We've been doing putting our research together. Mm -hmm. It's coming together in new and different ways, if you can believe it. Oh, yes. But it's going to be uh, mind-blowing. And, and that's the time of year when the sun hits right in between the, my legs and my big mankini. Yeah, so it's going to be Stuart Henge? This, yes. Stu Henge. Stuart Henge. Stu Henge. No, we don't like that word, Stu. That's my, that's a, You're not going to stew. Yeah, You're I do. You know that I do. No, that's stink. Mm -hmm. We're talking about stew. Mm -hmm. You're going to be steward. You're the steward of the people. Mm -hmm. Steward Henge. As long as I'm not a steward on Malaysian Airlines. Steward Henge. Mm -hmm. So, come to our October conference, you will see Steward Henge. Seriously? From Sirius? That's the secret. Well, I guess we told them too much already. I think so. And now we have to flee. They're probably already fleeing if they're smart. Mm -hmm. Well... Um, hopefully we'll see you next time. They're fleeing to St. Joseph. That, you know, a lot of them are. Yeah. I'm getting emails. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When the emails work, I get them. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.